If you're wondering how you can get some smooth, confident, clean lines in Clip Studio Paint, you've clicked the right video. I'm Odunze, aka White Manga, the creator of Apple Black and Bacasi, published and serialized on Saturday AM and PM respectively. And I'm going to share with you guys a few tips and tricks for Clip Studio Paint that you can use for your own work. This will be the third video in our Clip Studio Paint series, where I share all sorts of tips and tricks. There'll be a link in the description where you can check out the rest of the playlist. And this is where we're using Clip Studio Paint to create our Avenger Infinity Wars type crossover event with Saturday AM characters called Saturday Wars that will be published within our new physical magazine called Super Saturday out this fall. Clearly we've partnered up with Clip Studio Paint to bring this video to you guys. And if you guys wanna get a three month free trial of Clip Studio Paint and a chance for you to get your original characters featured within our crossover event in Saturday Wars. Use the link in the description to find more details. We'll be hearing from other talented artists within our Saturday AM family in different ways to get smooth lines within Clips of Your Paint. We'll go over the settings, vector layers, the list goes on. So enjoy. Please guys, a lot of work goes into these videos, so I'd appreciate it if you do all the cool engagement stuff that's gonna help the video with YouTube and all that. And please hit subscribe. Uh, about 40% to like 60% of you guys who watch the videos regularly aren't subscribers. All things help a great deal. Thanks. Now, some of the tips that we would apply today, especially the ones where we're just focusing on, you know, hand motion and just the confidence while inking can be applied to even traditional inking, right? So if you're already kind of good with traditional inking, making that transition into digital art shouldn't be too, too crazy. It will then come down to more of your understanding of the software, in this case, Clip Studio Paint. It shouldn't matter too much what tablet you're using. I've used all sorts of tablets, XP Pen, Huion, Wacom, even my cheap old school Wacom bamboo tablet. It's more about the user, less about the tool. First things first, you have the tool options. Note that if you don't see some of these, like the sub tool or the tool property, brush size, all of that, you can always go here to the top of the window and find them and just turn them on. And if you don't see some of these where you have, well, the tools right here and you have the shortcuts to switch between them, I hit a B for the brushes and then you have options, India ink, oil paint, watercolor, realistic. And then when you hit on one, it'll give you a ton of properties to play with like the density in some cases let's say with the india ink darker bleed version we have brush size opacity of just the brush itself the blending mode you want to be working with anti-aliasing brush density we'll kind of play with all these things so you know exactly what's going on here and these are what you kind of use now i like to start simple again this is for beginners you hit a p for shortcut pen and markers you see the options for the markers see the option for the pen if you hit p again you get pencils pastels and all sorts of stuff right we're trying to imitate what traditional comic book manga inking would be like and in some cases anime as well where we use a p for a pen and a real g pen this is the g pen so we've created a new layer to mess with and I like to use the real G pen because it's more mimicking that traditional feel, that traditional touch where it does have a little bit of a texture on the edges on the canvas. And while the G pen over here is just really smoother and feels more digital. But we're trying to get smoother lines. Clip Studio Paint allows for quality line work and pen pressure where you try to get thick to thin lines on the same stroke while using the appropriate tool for whatever you want to put together. So you create a new canvas. You wanna make sure that the resolution, the DPI over here is at least 300, but I'm just gonna keep things at 600 and have the pixels be a thousand on each end, but that's completely up to you. One of the first things before you even jump into it is you wanna have a good understanding of your pen pressure on your tool. And that for the most part depends on the graphic tablet or just the tablet that you're using. Open up the settings for your tablet. And once you do that, you'd be able to manipulate some of the settings for the pen pressure and how things go. You see this graph. Then in most cases, again, keeping this video pretty default for beginners, you don't need to touch most of these, but you have more options here to even disable pen pressure. And there is a time and place for stuff like that. Pen pressure is literally just that. Working within the software, when pressing lightly, it should seem light and the brush size should be thin. And if you press harder, then it gets a little thicker. Pretty straightforward. So even though you're not seeing me actually draw, you can kind of tell 
what I'm doing or the amount of pen pressure I'm applying to the tablet. In some cases, if you're having trouble putting that together, you can go up here to file. Sometimes you're having trouble, you can either go up here to file, sometimes it's over here, but in some cases it was right over here, Clip Studio Paint, and then you go to pen pressure settings. And in some cases you might want to reset to default, I've seen that happen from time to time, where the pen pressure is all whack, you just want to reset the default and it should be better. If you want to go a little extra while adjusting the pen pressure right here in Clip Studio Paint, because you have the option to do that, there are several places where you can adjust or mess with the pen pressure to fit you. To adjust the settings, Clip Studio Paint can also adjust them automatically for you. All you need to do is keep drawing lines and you will see the graph change each time. Based off of the lines you draw, Clip Studio Paint automatically creates the best settings for you. Adjustments can be made from one stroke or multiple strokes. Before you settle, you can also try to adjust the results to see if they fit for you. Once you're satisfied, click OK. So the tool here is the pen. The sub tool is the real G pen and they all have ways to adjust the pen pressure as well. So if we go to the real G pen right here, this icon over here, right by the side of brush size, you hit that and then you have the ability to turn off pen pressure. Hit it and you can turn it back on. And then tilt which doesn't do too much difference. It's almost like more, it just changes the flow of, in this case, digital ink to a degree. Again, keeping this very beginners, you don't wanna mess with this too much, but again, this kind of changes the settings for the pen pressure as well. I recommend you play around with all the tools that are available here and your sub tools and the settings and the properties and all of that. So you can have a wide array of toys to play with. Some key things you want to practice on would be your confidence with your strokes, the consistency of the stroke, having a swift motion, loose wrists if you have to. And you can think of interesting ways within the software where you can achieve the smoothest lines as best as possible in your way. So obviously here with the settings, I'm using the real G-Pen. Again, that's to mimic the G-Pen, which is the, you can say, industry standard for inking manga in Japan, but in most places as well. So Eclipse Studio Paint already has a nice textured pen right there already ready to go to replicate that. Her brush size is pretty self-explanatory. So even though I'm pressing lightly and getting some very thin lines, there is this interval of how thin or how thick it can go based off of the brush size. Opacity, also self-explanatory. If you reduce the opacity by 50, that's what you get. Anti-leasing, here by default, you have these op four options, none, weak, medium, and strong. None is really where everything really looks like stairs. And it's more evident once the brush you're using is a little smoother. And once you increase the brush size to a bajillion, you go to anti-leasing, maybe not too, maybe not too huge. If you go to the edges, if you zoom in on the edges, they feel a whole lot more like stairs. And then, over here with weak, medium, strong, weak is where things feel less like stairs. Medium, which is the one I like to use, less like stairs. And that's what aliasing is. All of this would be more evident if the canvas was a smaller size and maybe if the resolution was also smaller than 600 DPI, the smaller, the more visible we'll be able to see the anti-aliasing. And I know what you're thinking, anti-aliasing, aliasing, who cares? I've heard people say both. Are you the only person you've heard say anti-aliasing? And your point is exactly? Shut up. Here with stabilization, it's almost like adding smoothness to things. We have that at six, just so you can see how it works. It almost kind of smoothens things out. The brush is being dragged along and just kind of helps you smooth things out a little easier. I have the stabilization on six and this, watch how it works, right? Okay, I'm doing like this, you can get away with that. But if the stabilization is really high, and we try that again, it kind of smoothens things out more than I actually want. So I like to keep it pretty low, maybe four back at a six, and that way I can do what I want. If it's high, it's much harder to get that. Depending on what you want, you need to keep stabilization in mind. For me, by default, I'm just keep things at, at, at a six. It's kind of what I'm used to at this point. 
And that's how you can get smoother lines. If I were to draw a quick circle with a stabilization pretty decent at six. Try it again. Try it again. The struggles of digital art, guys. Keep Control Z until you get what you want. That's an extra tip, bonus tip for you guys. If you try to get a little stroke and it's not doing what you want, always Control Z until you get it. And sometimes you can have a Control Z button directly on your graphic tablet on the sides over here. But you see, we got that with a six. If I do it at a higher one, the circle is just a little smoother, even though it's not as connected. It's just a little smoother, harder to notice just because of how I'm doing it. If we try with a different shape, Again, stabilization, low, try. Uh, stabilization, high. It's just a little smoother. I have it really high. <laughs> so you find the setting that works best for you. The last thing with shading, obviously you can shade in a million ways. People do pointillism. Doing that digitally is just craziness. It's better to just find a brush, a texture. Say if we hit B for brushes, you have other things and many options that we can use to maybe mimic that. Or maybe if you hit B again, it gives you tone scraping, like all sorts of things you can do if you wanna shade in that way. See here with the gauze, we have cross hatching right here. That's just, that's the first option of cross hatching. The second option is like this, kind of zoom out a little bit, maybe reduce the brush size. A shortcut to reduce brush sizes would be the brackets. And then you can give you that effect if that's something you want to use. Another cross hatching is tone scraping. So you have all these options that come with clips of your paint. But if you want to cross hatch manually, especially with this mod aesthetic, there's one way, obviously we could just go that but I tend to have lines go like this and then from one end over here we're connecting to this one and that's how you kind of put it together and then you can have a gradient feel by putting more strokes I was getting darker from top to bottom and the motion that we go from in this case we're kind of stroking from left to right or right to left will be based off of the motion of the character in some cases. So if the character was running from left to right, this is how I would actually shade that. If not this way, maybe like Naruto or something like that with just simple strokes like so. And they always have a slight curve to them. They're never like 100% straight. Again, depending on the motion, it could be this way. It's up to you. Like I said, it's up to you. So if the character was jumping from the top of a building downwards, I'll probably shade everything in this way. And there are other things to mimic movements, but here we're just gonna focus on how to get those smooth lines. Doing so. In some cases, you might wanna reduce the brush size only slightly. And then you have that, you can give that gradient feel. And maybe add some more strokes as it fades out. In some places, there are creators who shade completely, filling it, filling it in black. You kind of need to figure out what works best for you. So what I want to show is the <clears throat> vector layer. So far, right now, we've been working with raster layers. A vector layer basically is a layer that allows you edit lines that you've already drawn, but you can kind of increase the size of the layer and reduce the layer without really losing any quality in the lines. It just allows for more editing without losing any quality or resolution or anything, or any of that when you increase the size, reduce the size or edit. But with raster layers, you're always gonna have that struggle. So here, you create a vector layer here, like we just done. You see this icon over here is a sign that's a vector layer. And this is a sign that's just a regular raster layer. So on the vector layer, any stroke you do, hit shortcut O and you can kind of touch it and you can edit the line in points to do what you want. You can move it around, you can resize it, all sorts of stuff. Also, with raster layers, when you draw, regardless of what brush you use, and you cut it, 
with another line, hit shortcut E for the erasers, but there's a vector eraser. And if you hit the vector eraser, you have that on, that's the sub tool. It just allows you cut any tips much easier, like so. So I'm just gonna swipe and that's gone. Swipe, gone. Vector eraser, swipe, gone, swipe, gone, swipe, swipe. So everything is just a little bit easier. If you try to use the regular brush to erase, it will erase, but it will kind of make some adjustments. If you use the vector eraser on a stroke like so, you could erase most of it, if not all of it, depending on where some of the anchor points are. But in some cases, you can just erase the whole line at once. Do the lines for his hair. Simple strokes right there. And then you can zoom in, go to a vector eraser, and just clean out those tips because you just work faster this way versus manually erasing things. So let's hear from another Saturday Wars creator, Rashad Milhouse. In this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the vector eraser in Clip Studio Paint. All right, so now I have my perspective grid all lined up. And then you can pretty much just start inking and you can use any inking to to start with and as you can see I'm not too concerned about the overlapping lines because of the vector eraser what you also want to make sure you do is come over into your tool settings as well and make sure that the actual box right next to vector eraser is checked and basically what that helps to do is simply erase an entire vector line without having to waste all that time actually erasing. You just erase where the lines overlap and voila, that's it. Here's an example of a page that we're working on for Saturday Wars. I'm working on this. This is the part of the series where I'm putting things together. Where we're in the Apple Black universe, you'll kind of be seeing my art style and where we're in a different series, you'll be seeing the art style of that creator. But there are characters that kind of tie everything together and all the characters where they're working together, that's gonna to be illustrated by Rashad Milhouse. So I'm kind of handling my part, my section of the comic where the character here, Reyna, you can think of her as Kind of like our Sam Jackson slash Phil Coson yet her own thing, but basically she's recruiting all the characters that are supposed to kind of come together to fight this impending doom because something happened to their own forces. I'll kind of leave the book to kind of tell that story. But long story short, she needs Sano's help to join the team. And this is a page that I'm going to have to kind of put together. And here are here's an example of another page, but. Bottom line, these are the kind of quality you'd be able to get within Clip Studio Paint. This was done with the perspective ruler. It's much easier to put these backgrounds together. <laughs> Honestly, a little more fun. On the side here with the layers, you're able to see each panel in its own folder. And this first panel, you can kind of see the sketch of it. If I re re remove the inks, that's how it looks. I'm gonna turn the sketch layer off and that's the final. So you can see the line quality there trying to mimic traditional inking if you zoom out see the quality of the lines how crispy it can be but also how it's trying to mimic real traditional inking at least that's what i'm going for but you can really do even more if you want it to look really digital you have that option as well this is kind of just my art style to show you guys what's possible within clip studio paint and just to get your feet wet it is good practice to just understand how thick and thin you can get it when you do the curves how I can get thicker one end and then thinner again to connect it if you do a circle how the stabilization works to get smoother lines the anti-aliasing all of that s curves almost like calligraphy but another way to guarantee really smooth lines is to actually have quick strokes because if I have a stroke that goes like this That's fine, but if you want it smoother, then you have to be able to practice doing it faster. And when you do that, you can see we're having more smoother, consistent, and confident lines, and that's how you get them. This line from here to here is something that I have to consider 
can be a really quick smooth line based off of my hand and what range my hand can actually get to. If we're drawing his back and I wanted to go from here to here, I wouldn't try to just do everything in one quick motion. I would kind of break it into parts for quick motions. And to do that, you have quicker but smooth and shorter parts that are done. So basically you ink that whole curve in parts, but all smooth lines. So that would be like that, like that, like that, like that. And this way, it's actually more consistent with how the body would, would be. We can just treat it in parts. But the longer the path is, it's harder to then have that smooth stroke. It's still doable if you have a lot of practice. The more the lines change direction, the more difficult it is to have completely smooth strokes. So you kind of have to break it into parts. I'm good at real quick strokes like so. And in some cases I can do two real quick. And usually at this tail end, you kind of want to have it fade out where the stroke becomes thinner based off of the pen pressure. Like that. Maybe I can do three, but the more you do, the more complicated it is. The hands, this line variation, because it's closer to the screen, I'm going to press a little harder, just a little harder, to actually have some line weight and line variation so that the fingers pop a whole lot more. Sometimes you can have a line that kind of overlaps like so, right? The motion kind of revving up to then do the stroke. It's kind of revving up here. It's smoother towards the middle section, but then you have parts of the drawing that you don't need. And we can just erase that part easily. And you erase it with a stroke motion so that everything looks consistent. And basically you just apply that to the rest of the drawing. If we go to his eyes, we want to go from here to here. We don't need to break that up too much, so we can just go completely. Or we can break it halfway and, and do again. And that way everything is a little smoother and more consistent. Try again. That was one motion. Or break it down. Let's do it with high stabilization, see, see how it goes. You see how easier it was and smoother it was to put together? That's how you get the smooth lines. You can just increase stabilization to get that. See the eyes up here, erase the parts I don't want, leaving a sharp edge at the end. The eraser is your friend, control Z is your friend. And you can go over lines multiple times, right? But you wanna go in with the same motion. You don't want to kind of be shaky and your hands all over the whole place. You kind of want to slowly try to get it. And if you see that it looks a little awkward, you can go in with the eraser and clean up the edges to make it look smoother. Obviously, that's more time consuming. It would be best if you can just nail it the first time. Break it down to strokes or just do it with one smooth one. And that's how you kind of build confidence you build confidence smoothness skill techniques know yourself and your wrist and how you work muscle memory all of that is built over time with these little techniques here and there as the lines kind of meet at a pointy end it usually gets thinner at that point but there is like a thick period right before it i try to make some of the curves as consistent as possible and we kind of just have that same approach and all the approaches we've discussed throughout this video to complete the rest of the panel and here I wasn't using a vector layer, I used a raster layer, just out of consistency. I've been using a raster the whole time. In some cases it's better to use a vector layer. Like for backgrounds, vectors are great because they're easy to just get rid of the lines like you saw with Rashad. Put in some highlights in the hair in as creative a way as possible. And yeah, that's it. For the two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, I thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. You can find White Manga, me, or Saturday AM. All our social media links or any links you could possibly need will be linked in the description below. 
please check out the Saturday AM app. It's free to download. You can read the starter guide that's in there to learn all things Saturday AM. If you're new to this channel and you're new to Saturday AM, think Shonen Jump, but here in the West, character profiles and more. The latest issue of every magazine is free to read once released. Check out all the other videos in this Saturday Wars playlist. Shout out to Clip Studio Paint for partnering with us. So it's White Manga, and I'm out.